the premise here is that if you break down their revenue versus their basically their member base or their mm -hmm. subscribers, and you sort of use that measure revenue per user or revenue per per subscriber, which is a classic metric for media companies, Absolutely. even for telcos and things like that. And you look at their number versus other internet companies and even traditional media companies, you start to scratch your head and say, maybe this isn't as interesting as we think, mm -hmm. or maybe there's another story here. So I thought it'd be interesting to sort of pull it into the lab. Number one, look at some of the numbers that were highlighted in the piece. So this idea that basically Facebook's making about $5 per, uh, per user versus Google, which is about $30, versus even Yahoo, which has kind of been a, a whipping boy as sort of you know on the decline, making about $17, and sort of say, hmm, that makes you think about whether A, they're just not nailing it in terms of the model, or there's something a little bit deeper. New York Times making north of $800 per reader for its print edition. And then you compare that to some of the numbers on the online side, and you realize that what a franchise the New York Times is, number one. But also you see some of the back story there that maybe it just also highlights the inefficiency of the print business that advertising or advertisers are basically paying way too much for what yeah. they're getting with traditional media, which is one of the reasons why obviously the dollars have been flowing to online and to digital mm -hmm. and social and things like that. Are we saying that it's good to be one way or the other? Or is it trying to be in a happy medium or is it really business by business? So I think that the, the, it's really in, in a way apples and oranges. So yeah, yeah if, you, if you treat Facebook as a pure publishing company, mm -hmm. then, the, then the $5 seems kind of puny. But then you think about it sort of in terms of the evolution of its growth, and it goes back to the discussion we had with Esteban Kolsky uh, about sort of where social media yeah. is in, in the evolution and the adoption curve. Mm -hmm. And you realize that print publishing is incredibly mature. It's an established business. There's established expectations. People pay a premium to be associated with a premium brand Absolutely. like the New York Times. And if you look at the $800, it's split about 50-50 between subscription revenue versus advertising yeah. revenue. So we subscribe, for example, to the New York Times at home. My wife pays a premium because she likes to get the New York Times yeah, at home. Absolutely. So their, their, their customer base, even though it may be on the decline, is still a premium customer base, and the advertisers pay a premium price to get to those premium customers. So in a way, it's apples and oranges. The other thing that's interesting to me is Facebook is evolving. And if you look yeah. at Facebook's revenue model, about 90% of their revenue is still from kind of traditional basic advertising banner ads. There's five things that I think... Um, are interesting. So we just talked about a couple of them in terms of sort of new versus old yep. and the evolution of them. If you look at um, the population, right, so the 800 million Facebook users may not be as active as, for example, the, uh, the New York Times readers. So you have to start to cut down that number when you do the math. So mm -hmm. if you say really only half of them are active or a quarter of them are active, then all of a sudden that $5 starts bumping up. Exactly. So, so if we think about sort of how active those users are, that's, mm -hmm. that's a key point. Another one is Facebook is creating a whole ecosystem of value. So Facebook is more of a platform than it yeah. is necessarily just a publishing company. If you look at the ecosystem, I mean, just Zynga, for example, even though they've come down after their IPO, mm -hmm. I mean, they still have a $7 billion market cap. So yeah. Facebook is creating value across the ecosystem for t companies like Zynga, mm -hmm. for other social marketing tools, for a whole bunch of things that sort of are in the space. So the true value of Facebook is reflected not just in sort of their revenue, but also in the companies around Facebook. And then I think the last point is they're just getting started with what they're creating. A lot of the ad units aren't that interesting. But if you yeah. look at sponsored stories, which came out, uh, about the middle of last year. Mm -hmm. If you look at the real potential of social commerce, all the ways that they can monetize, you know, a lot of a lot of brands on Facebook are starting to roll out some of their own storefronts, but Facebook hasn't really monetized a lot of that.